everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, and today I've been doing my book haul. Let's get going. And it's actually been a while since I did the last book haul, so that's actually a good thing, guys. I always see like these big book tubers. They always have like these book hauls one day after another. I'm like, do you really need? Do you really need that much? But anyways, um, let's get going to my book haul. So my first book is you guys are actually all already familiar with because I keep talking about it. That is The Midnight Game by Cynthia Murphy. We have six, we have a group of strangers who meet online but then they decided that they actually want to meet in real life so that they can play The Midnight Man. So what with The Midnight Man you have to start at exactly 12 and the game itself finishes at 3.33 a.m. So, between those times, you have to keep running around, otherwise if you stay in one place, the midnight, midnight man will catch you. And that is something you don't want. So, the point of this game is to survive. My next one is The Scholar at Canvas by Kylie Lee Baker. Zen and dreams of becoming a royal alchemist, of providing for her family by making alchemical our chemical gold and gems for the wealthy to eat in order to stay young forever. But for now, she's trapped in her impoverished village in southern China, practicing an illegal form of alchemy to keep food on a table, rescuing the dead for a prize. When Zelen finally has a chance to complete her imperial exams, she ventures to the capital to compete against the best alchemist in the country in task she'll be lucky to survive let alone pass. On top of that, her reputation for raising the dead has followed her, and the crown prince himself seeks out her help, suspecting a coming assassination attempt. My next book is Burn Our Bodies by Rory Power. Ever since Margaret was born, it's been just her and her mother, no answers to any of Margaret's questions about what came before, no history to hold on to, no relatives to speak of, just the two of them stuck in the uh, run-down apartment struggling to get along. But that's not enough for Margaret. She wants family, she wants a past, and she just found a key she needs to get it. A photograph pointing her to a town called Fowling, pointing her home. Only when Margaret gets there, it's not what she bargained for. As they say, be careful what you wish for. My next book is Thrown Off the Fallen by Karen Maniscalco. We are following Wrath, or Envy, I should say and his son, Sinner Villain Wicked. The Prince of Envy has never claimed to be a saint, but when a cryptic note arrives signaling the beginning of a deadly game, he knows it would take more than a hint of sin to win and save his falling demon court. Middles, hex, objects, anonymous players, nothing will stand in his way, though none of his meticulous plans prepare him for her. The frustrating artist who ignites his sin like no other, Richard Dale Darling Liar. The trouble with scoundrels and black gods is that they haven't had a modicum of honor. A fact Miss Camellia Antonius learns after one desperate mistake allows Waverly Green's most notorious rake to blackmail her. To avoid a ruinous scandal, Camellia is forced to enter a devil's bargain with envy, little expecting his game will awaken her true nature. That sounds fun. And my next book is actually a sequel to The Foul Lady's Fortune, and that is Foul Heart Huntsman by Chloe Gong. Winter is drawing thick in 1932 in Shanghai as the never ever nearing threat of a Japanese invasion. Rosalind Lang has suffered the world's possible fate for a national spy. She's been exposed. With reporters camped outside her apartment watching for the infamous Lady Fortune, she's barely left her bedroom in weeks. Plotting her next course of action after Orion Hill was taken and his memories of Rosalind wiped. Though the marriage might have been a sham, his absence hurts more than any physical wound. She won't rest until she gets him back. But with her identity in the open, the task is near impossible. The only way to leave the city and rescue her beloved is under the guise of a national tour. It's easy to convince her superiors that the countryside needs unity more than ever, and who better than a mortal girl to test to stir pride and strength into the people. So I'm excited about this. I really like Foul Lady Fortune. 
I might have to go back and reread Power Lady Fortune, but I kind of know already what's happened because I already read it. Even though I read it quite a long time ago, but I'm excited for this book. And my next book is Curious Ties by Pascal Lacal. That is a great name. Emily might be a student at the prestigious Aldrin College for Luna Magics, but her healing abilities have always been medical at best, until a treacherous night in the Double Mary Caves kills a, a group of her classmates and leaves her as the only survivor. Now Emily is plagued by strange and possible powers that no healer should possess, powers that would ruin her life if the wrong person were to discover them. To gain control of these new abilities, Emily enlists the help of the school's most exclusive student, Buzz, a boy already well versed in the deadly nature of dark and magic, whose sister happened to be one of the drowned students and Emily's best friend. Determined to find the truth behind the drownings and the cult-like secret society she is convinced her classmates were involved in, Emily is faced with even more questions when the supposedly drowned students start washing ashore, alive only for each to immediately die a horrible, magical death. I don't know if that's the way I want to die, because <laughs> that just sounds not that great. And honestly, look at the chapter headings. They are so beautiful. Like, it's so pretty. And look at this, we have black pages too. Oh my gosh, this book is beautiful. And that is gorgeous. Oh, that is beautiful. My other book is Last Violet Call by Chloe Gong. So I think these are like short stories. Because one of them is A Foul Thing. Roma and Julia have established themselves as the heads of an underground weapons ring in Zuzong, making a living the way they do best by remaining anonymous in the peaceful, quiet life. But when they hear about several Russian girls turning up dead in nearby towns, they decide to investigate and ultimately discover that this mystery is much closer to home than they ever imagined. Oh, and this is really pretty. Look at this. Wow. Now you know how I felt the first time I said, I love you. Are we really going to do this? Are we going to risk it? Oh, this is pretty. So the other one in this foul murder, Bendik and Marshall have been summoned by Roma to find the elusive Asaitis Lovings and bring him to Zhu Zong. Time, time is of the essence aboard the week-long Trans-Siberian Express, but when someone is murdered on board, Benedict and Marsha convince the officer in charge not to stop the train so that they are thrown off schedule. Instead, they pretend that they are investigators and promise they can solve the murder, but as they dig, dig dip, deeper, they realize that the murder might have surprising ties to their own mission. So, this is this foul murder, and this is a foul thing based on these covers. Wow, this is really beautiful. So that's all good. And look at it. I really like this. So you guys actually already saw this in the vlog I posted today. As I'm filming this today. But this is The Lost Bookshop by Evie Woods. On a quiet street in, Do in Dublin, a lost bookshop is waiting to be found. For too long, all Pauline, Martha, and Henry have been side characters in their own lives. But when the vanishing bookshop casts its spell, these three unsuspecting strangers will discover that their own stories are every bit as extraordinary as the one found in the pages of their beloved books. By unlocking the secrets of the shelves, they find themselves transported to a world of wonder where nothing as it seems. So, Narnia 2.0. And my next one, the one I had thought I had read, but I didn't. The um, I had thought, I meant to say I was, I had read Midnight in Everwood, which is a Nutcracker retail. So in this book I have not read, it's The Winter Garden by Alexandra Bell. On the night her mother dies, 18-year-old Beatrice receives an invitation to the mysterious Winter Garden. A place of wonder and magic filled with all manner of strange and sublime, flora and fauna, the garden is her solace every night for seven days. But when the garden disappears and no one believes the story, Beatrice is left to wonder if it was truly real. Eighteen years later, on the eve of her wedding to a man her late father approved of, but she does not love, 
Beatrice makes a decision to throw off the expectations of Victorian English society and search for the garden. But when both her, she and her closest friend Rosa receives invitations to compete to create spectacular pleasure gardens, with the place being one life-changing wish, she realizes she may be closer to finding it than she ever imagined. Now all she has to do is win. And my last one is The Grimoire of Grey Fates by Hannah Alke and Margaret Owen. A prestigious school for young sorcerers, the Galileo Academy has recently undergone a comprehensive overhaul, reinventing itself as a roaming academy in which students of all cultures and identities are celebrated. In this new Galileo, every pupil is welcome, but some people aren't so happy with the recent changes. That includes everyone's least favorite professor, Septimius Dropworth, so Professor Snape 2.0, and stodgy old man known for his harsh rules and harsher punishments, but when the professor's body is discovered on school grounds under mysterious circumstances, the academy students must solve the murder themselves before the lens of suspicion turns on them. So, this is all exciting. And that's all my book haul that I have gotten recently. Uh, let me know what is your favorite, let me know what is your book haul. And please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. And I'll see you on my next one. Bye!